You're good there. I heard an owl. Well, you see, I'm having dinner. Um, I was working out on the ladder again, and actually, I noticed something. So you know, I like to work out with like the the weight jacket, and also now I've, I've worked out with extra resistance. Yeah. It doesn't mean a damn thing if you don't activate it. Like literally. Hmm. So you're just wearing a, a thin vest, essentially. Yeah, but if, even if you build all that strength, that's not going to mean a thing unless you take vests off and and the resistance off, and you actually, you know, get you like do the workout without any resistance on. So yeah, I can actually feel that extra strength go, and you can actually use it. This is the Experience Podcast with me and someone else. Yo, what's up? There's back, and uh, it's just us. I thought, um, you know, if you didn't have anything to talk about, I had something we could go into. All right, go for it. Well, we've already done uh, a couple of these. It's kind of part of my interview series. We've done the the Who is John Roberts, and you're, you're famous uh, in different ways than he is, but... I think I think you're pretty famous in the Atlanta-based area. Would you say that's correct? Well, uh, I don't know about the entire Atlanta-based area, but <laughs> as you may know, I gained a certain uh, notoriety amongst our uh, graduating class, if you will. Yeah, and, and you know, you've been on this this show several times, but I thought we could get into uh, kind of your background. You know, maybe people are wondering how you got to where you are today. From uh, inception all the way to government secrets or whatever you're doing right now. So. Well, it's government secrets in space, but I'm not getting to the government secrets part yet. I got, <laughs> I got a little bit of a way to go, just a little bit. But uh, yeah, um, well, let's start from the beginning. Uh, I was born in Atlanta. Uh, I was raised in Johns Creek. It's an interesting place to grow up. I mean, when I grew up, it was kind of a tight community, tight bubble, especially in the neighborhood and also the adjoining neighborhood. I'd like to think we all knew each other and um, we all kind of grew up together. We were always around, we were always hanging out with each other. We always saw the same faces, whether it was at like school or um, at social functions, you know, stuff like that. I will say that as I grew older and I got into high school, if you've ever been to a super competitive high school, then you'll probably understand what I'm about to say. There's the kind of competitive where everybody's pushing each other to be the best version of themselves, and they usually just, like, encourage each other to to be better. And they push each other, and everybody's growing and developing as a result. And then there's the kind of competition where... Um, People climb over each other. They don't put, build each other up, but rather attempt to push each other down and claw their way up to the top by any means necessary. Unfortunately, that's the kind of high school I went to. I didn't realize it until I grew older. But that's what Northview was like. And yeah. part of that might have to do with the fact that we all grew up and we were all around each other, so we're kind of always like in touch. And everybody kind of knew everybody's business. Like, oh, how many AP classes are you taking? Are you taking tuition? Are you in debate club? Are you in math club? That kind of crap. Yeah, so so you've, you've kind of, and a lot of people know you today as a very competitive person. But what you're kind of getting at is that was kind of how you grew up. And your, your neighborhood, your environment was very competitive, right? Yes, but I wouldn't say I'm competitive in the fact that I'm going to bring you down. I'm just going to try well, to be the best no. version of myself. That's no, yeah, I didn't mean it that way. I just meant that just kind of how you grew up, you've always been known to be uh, to try to be your best, yeah. And I think that shows in, in how you are right now, too. Thanks, so. man. I will say I'm thankful for Taekwondo because it helped keep me grounded. I was able to train it for about uh, 13 years actively uh got to my third degree black belt but it kept me grounded and uh it kind of gave me that drive to be better 
Uh, it was a lot of fun. And I highly recommend it to anybody who wants to pick up anything new. You pick up a martial arts, you'll learn, you'll get, you'll learn to get better, you'll get fit. You'll also learn how to stay committed. Oh, okay. I could take a hint, too, you know, my commitment issues. Um. <laughs> Yeah, is there, are there any other hobbies you want to talk about that you've been doing for a long time? Um, ironically, uh, when I was growing up, we had a we had a thing. So I'm Telugu, and when I was young, we had a something called a Telugu Association of Metro Atlanta, and that was part of the whole that whole Indian people community we grew up in. We were all around each other. We did some things. We put on some cultural uh, events. It's been a while, but for some reason, there was a thing we did. And um, I was in it, and I was supposed to be a trumpet player. And from there, that's kind of how I got encouraged to pick up the trumpet. So I started in uh, fourth grade when we still had the uh, elementary band program. Too soon for the elementary band program. And uh, I never quit. I never uh, looked back from there. Um, but I also trained in piano for a bit. Um, actually, for a bit, I mean for 10 years. Now I'll just freelance. I have a keyboard. It's it's a lot of fun, just noodling around, doing whatever. Yeah, I mean, you, you we, we can get into the music side of things. I mean, of course, you definitely have a passion for music. Um, it's fun, music and sports, my dude. Music and sports, and I think you kind of found your calling. Ironically, um, I didn't do much of it my first year at Tech. Yeah, do you want to explain that? Some people don't even realize that. You know, if they didn't know you back then, they thought, oh, you've been doing it your whole life or whatever. You know, I didn't even do it, it in high school. So yeah, when I, when I went to middle school, we had a, a thing called eighth grade night. And when the idea was we had to go to a high school that we were probably going to go to. In my case, it was Northview. And we, had to, and we basically got to be in their marching band for a day. Which was fun, but also you have to bear in mind this is Northview, and they're very, it's a very competitive place, and uh, it's also a very high-stress environment, only because of competitiveness, which is why I never did marching band in high school. I didn't think I could handle it. And then I got to tech. Didn't exactly think uh, I was going to I didn't exactly think that it was going to be easy that first semester, so I kind of want to feel things out. And also, given the fact that I've never done marching man before, uh, I definitely wanted to just ease into it. Of course, I joined Symphonic Band. That's how I met uh, the drum majors, uh, Don Andrews and Parker Bunton. And she graduated after that semester. Catherine Schramm. They're really nice. They're really good to me. Um, and they and Joyce and Chris and BJ convinced me to join at Surround Sounds my first semester. So I joined the next, and so I joined the next year. And well, the rest they say is history. Yeah, so, um, do you want to talk about your time in the band? Like, kind of your, your favorite moments, your biggest achievements, maybe some, some down man. moments. You don't have to talk oh, about those, man. but. That was, band was a lot of fun. Honestly, I think band is why I survived tech. I was gonna say, I think a lot of people would consider it one of your defining traits, of course. right? Um, of course. It's just uh, when people think of you, they think of you screaming on the sidelines, or uh, stands, but close enough. Oh, <laughs> I say silence. Stands, maybe on the sidelines too. Uh, <laughs> I don't even think we do stuff on the sidelines. No, but no when you walk down, like stand. before, uh, before we go on, and you know, there's still yeah, playing the sure. game. I think yeah. there was a moment, maybe it was like a UGA game or something, where we were on a sideline and we scored, uh, like right before halftime. Um, but yeah, no? yes. No, I don't yeah. recall. Well, maybe I made it up. Anyway, putting me on the side, on the stands, uh, you know, running around in practice. Do you want to talk about? Yeah, any of those those special moments that stand out? Uh, let's see. Probably my favorite moment was uh, beating Georgia and Athens, twenty-eight to twenty-seven, my first year. Uh, which is, I still got my rat cap from that year. So, a fun fact, I actually should have two rat caps. Um, the rat cap from 2015 when I actually got the tech, which I filled out despite going three and nine, 
albeit incorrectly. I filled it out incorrectly. I'm gonna I'm gonna confess. Uh, but I lost it. I lost it in a baseball game at NC State. I never found it. Um, I don't think any of the staff found it either. So, but then I got uh, got the rat cap in 2016 when I actually joined the band, and I still have it today. I still have it here. I almost lost it. It got stolen illegally, ironically, by my mm. section leader. Mm. I got it back, and I still have it today. <laughs> Definitely my biggest point. I don't think I had a low point. Um, probably the least high point was losing to Citadel. Although, yeah. well, it's an SES, but what do you even expect? I mean, I wouldn't even say getting blown out by UG is that ba as bad as losing to the Citadel or getting blown out by Clemson, especially when those teams were all college playoff contenders. Because at that point, it's not an expectation that you're going to lose. It's more of a hope that you're going to win. But the idea is, but the expectation is you're still going to go out there and you're going to give 100% no matter what happens. Vote for the vote for the players and for us in the band, regardless of the score. So yeah. that's always there. Is there anything you want to talk about college-wise outside of the band? You know, something maybe people don't know about you. Um. Well, outside of band. Um. So right now I work at the Aerospace Corporation. I work in uh, the Cyber Assessments and Research Division. And yeah, I had a, had a thing, I have had a great interest in cybersecurity and we have a cybersecurity club at Georgia Tech. It's called Gray Hat. I would attend the meetings. Uh, they had some interesting presentations. They had stuff about reverse engineering, uh, some of your basic hacking uh, techniques, like your reverse engineering, your SQL injection, your basic web exploitation. But then they had some more interesting stuff like uh, crypto. They talked about cryptocurrency. They talked about some NSA, uh, Sniffing stuff. Uh, they talked about some uh, some pen testing exercises, tales from the trenches, stuff like that. I actually attended a one of the uh, tech talks that I attended while I was at Gray Hat. Ironically, was also given by the Aerospace Corporation based on capabilities that we've worked on and some that I actually did work on, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Yeah, and I've yeah, seen you. Outside of, outside of band and uh, outside of band, uh, that was my thing. It was gray hat. Uh, I was a computer science major. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, how about your social life? Do you want to talk about that? What did you do for fun outside of, again, outside of the band stuff? Uh, did you I get mean, around to see the city or? I mean, I tried. Uh, most of the, if I did, I was usually like hanging out with my sister who was in med school at the time for a bit before she, uh, matched, uh, my seat, my third year of college. She matched as a med ped resident in Tulane where she is now and is about to enter fellowship. Well, we would, uh, we'd hang out. We'd go, go around the city together. It'd be fun. I wasn't much of a frat person and I really did that. I wasn't into that kind of stuff, but I did go to the CRC a good bit. That was my other thing. I kept fit. So you could call me a gym rat if you want. Uh, yeah. Do you want to talk about your sister or any other? You have any other siblings outside of? Uh, just my older sister. Uh, her name's Shama. She's also a Georgia Tech alum. She did her uh, undergrad in biology, and she was pre medicine. She went to med school at uh, Morehouse School of Medicine, which is uh, just a few exits down, give or take, near closer to I-20, uh, near, I guess, near Grady, actually, pretty close to Grady. Uh, now she's a med PhD resident in Tulane. She's about to go into fellowship. She wants to do pulmonary critical care. Hopefully she comes back to Atlanta, or if uh, she ends up in Virginia or Baltimore, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, so I, I guess are you... The only one in your family that's outside of Georgia. Well, I mean, I guess she is right now, but. Well, yeah, my parents are still in Georgia. Your parents are still in Georgia, so I was going to. Yeah. 
Shama's in, uh, Shama's in New Orleans, but she might go back to Georgia. And now I'm in Virginia and I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to resettle unless I find another job. And truth be told, I kind of like where I'm, where I'm working. We'll see. Have you been back to Georgia? Yes. Yes. I've been back to Georgia. Cause I guess I you've been, been, cause you've been working that job for, I guess, two years now. Is that right? About two year and years. A half. Year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. I yeah, wasn't that's right. for only two. I was an intern uh, the summer before my last semester of college, but that's only two months. Yeah. So we're going to call okay. it a year and a half. So in that past year and a half, you've been back. I know there's been a, a other circumstances in the world that it might have changed no, your plans. But... I've been back. I've been back. I've been able to visit my family. We've all been able to hang out. I've, uh, I've uh, mostly I've flown down a couple of times. A few uh, during the holidays, I made the drive. It's a nine-hour drive. Honestly, driving sucks. Given the choice, I'd rather fly. But driving also has its own uh, perks. Do you actually have a car? But yeah, I was able. I've been able to come back to come back to Atlanta. I've been able to visit. I'm actually looking to go back uh, sometime in September. Sometime and in I've September. been back to Tech. I have been back to Tech. I'm sure you can't even recognize it. Well, uh, I don't appreciate what they've done to the Campanile. <laughs> I think they're, I think they'll rectify that soon. Um, I hope they do. Cause man, that was, that was my, sh that was the shit, right? We'd go up there, we'd perform, and like we'd set up on the amphitheater. I don't know what they're gonna do now. I don't know what they're gonna do. It's yeah. not gonna be the same. I suppose not. Yeah. Hopefully they bring back the fountain and at least they give like some kind of space where the band can like gather and perform in a public space that people can like hang around and watch while they're uh, doing their tailgating shenanigans. I assume uh, they've got a plan for that. I haven't seen it. Have you? No, I haven't. Let me see us. I guess we'll have to find out next week or something. Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to talk about with your late life? Otherwise, we can go back. We can go back in time, back to your early childhood. Ooh, that's a blur, honestly. Yeah. Only notable thing, uh, well, I started Taekwondo. I got my first degree black belt sometime in elementary school. Uh, I think, or rather, my second degree black belt, like late in elementary school. There was the there was the spelling bee, which uh, was interesting. Uh, but other than that, really, early childhood was a bit of a blur. Honestly, I think middle school is when things got interesting. Got my third degree black belt. Um, our in our the River Trail Symphonic Band went to the GMEA and Service Conference. That was an interesting experience. Um, do you want to talk about how you got into you know, cybersecurity and I guess computer science in general? Now that's an interesting story. My like, dad's what, actually his computer science major. Yeah, I was going to uh, ask what your parents. A tech alumnus. My dad is a tech alumnus, class of 1988. Uh, and also a Georgia State alumnus, uh, master's in, also in computer science. I, I, you could say I kind of picked it up from him um, with some of the challenges he posed to us and that we try to work through. And then from there also with cybersecurity, it's like I watched a lot of movies. Uh, when I watched like action movies when I was younger and I saw people like hacking into things and it was like, it seemed so cool. And then you want to be the guy in the van. Yes, I want to be the guy breaking things. And then I actually learned about, wait, this is actually important kind of thing. And then I also learned, hey, maybe I could actually be the guy that sits behind the computer and breaks things uh, for good. I don't have to be the guy in the van doing the heist thing when I can also help defend against that kind of thing by at least helping people do it. And that's eventually what I think I want to get it and what I want to get into is that kind of space is pen testing right now i'm doing cyber capabilities development which is also 
a very interesting challenge because you got to be able to have that kind of vision of what are those threats out there and how can you defend it. Okay, so is that kind of the next phase in your career, I guess? Yep, that's at least that's the aim. And actually, right now, I'm pursuing my master's in cybersecurity. So hoping to get more of that, get more into that category, especially uh, if I can get a, get my clearance soon. And I believe that's online too, right? Yes, it's online. What makes it actually more challenging? Hmm. How so? Well, you got all the free time. It's kind of self-paced. You got to be able to. You got to make sure. It's basically up to you to make sure you don't fall behind. And it is very easy to fall behind. Okay. So what's your what's your tip to staying? Uh, uh, I guess ahead of schedule. Probably just have a schedule, at least like block off like an hour in the day or like two hours where you can just sit and work and do schoolwork. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, you're a pretty good student. Do you have any tips for, for incoming college uh, students? You know, how are they can I wrote a Reddit post about this. You wrote a Reddit post or you read one? I wrote a Reddit post. Um, it was a new student welcome, and I had a few tips. And at this time, at the time, I was um, about to graduate, and I wrote I wrote my own tips, at least for first years. Would you like to hear them? Let me find it first. Yeah, so go ahead. Uh, we'll hear your tips. I guess you, you I, I think I've seen some of those Reddit posts. You know, there's a lot of people coming in to college, not sure. And again, you, you were a pretty good student. Uh, you found a job. So you had some success, at least in that aspect. Yeah, I had a good bit of success. Uh, so here's what I wrote in that post. First off, don't overload yourself your first year. So that's something I kind of picked up. Because, like, I didn't want to come in there and be like, okay, let's take, like, 14 credit hours and uh, just get this thing over with. And then pretty soon you find yourself uh, drowning in, in coursework and credit hours and you get it. So basically the idea was, like, don't do that. Don't burn yourself out. Don't overload yourself your first year. If you're going to take, like, 14 to 15 credit hours, like, on average, like, maybe go down to, like, 11 or 12 that, uh, for your first couple of semesters. Take the time, find what you love about tech, find what you love about Atlanta, because you're not going to have that time when you get to the 4,000 level classes, trust me. So that's tip number one. Okay. Tip number two you know, I wrote here, don't expect the journey to be easy, because everybody's going to come in here, you're probably like top of your class in your high school, you got really good grades, you're probably, you're probably a straight A student in high school, but it's not going to matter because if you're not prepared, tech's going to eat your lunch. Which is why we have freshman forgiveness. So you can actually learn from mistakes. And I think they expanded that to not just freshmen, to anyone. Isn't that, is that to right? what, any, is what, any 1,000 and 2,000 level class? I don't know exactly just any 1,000 level class? Uh, I don't know how it works. I mean. Oh, luckily I didn't, I didn't need to use it, but. Yep. You and me uh, That's tip number two. Okay, keep going. Tip number three. Take care of yourself. So I know the thing is we've got had some issues with mental health and especially with the seemingly lack of quality facilities that are at that seem to be present at tech. The point is the point I was trying to make is like there are facilities, I mean, they may not be the best, but they are there. Ultimately, it's up to you to take advantage of them and use them to the max utility. But if you got to drop a class, drop a class. If you got to, if you need to talk to somebody, talk to somebody. And just, if you need to take the time off of, from academics, like if you, 
you need to drop your full course load and then just go for it. Don't don't kill yourself, please. So that's tip number three. Okay. And then uh, the last one I had in here is be proud. You, you you know what imposter syndrome is? You ever heard of that? Yeah. Yeah, apparently that tends to be a thing, especially at a elite institution like tech. To which I counter by saying, and I, and I quote, I'm going to quote this from my uh, from my post. You are at one of the most prestigious institutions of higher learning in the nation, if not the world. You may feel that you're not qualified because your peers did more in high school or outside school than you. But remember that you were chosen because of your potential for something greater. If you're willing to put in the work, Georgia Tech will help you achieve that potential. As you can guess, my uh, informal sub tip in there is, please wear your rag cap your first year. Just a, mm. just a, just a tip. It's like, wear your rag cap, you know, run the cake race, go to Midnight Bud. There's some cool traditions. You're at, well, you're at a great institution. Be proud of that fact. You can show your tech pride, take part in the traditions. But the point is, you made it. You made it to a place that's probably, that's probably going to change your life forever, if not, if not right now. And even if you're not qualified, like, you're not here because of what you did. It's like you're here because of what you've demonstrated that you can't, that you're going to do. It's a combination of both. And then and you I just got to put in the work and you're going to get where you want to go. And tech's going to help you, uh, help you get there. It's like Nick Selby said, if you want to change the world, you're at Georgia Tech. You can do that. Yeah, and I think a lot of what you said can apply to any college or just a new setting, right? Yeah. It could. It's, I guess you could call it like a general, here's how not to die in college. <laughs> yeah. I feel like more so at Tech because, like, we are we are great. I mean, it is kind of a stressful environment, though, although that's part of, although how you deal with it is ultimately up to you and the company you keep. Yeah. And I mean, you can attest, you can attest to this. Like, there's people that like, there's communities out there that will keep you grounded. Like, the band kept me grounded. Like, there's society. Like, if you're a Greek life person, that's that's a good place to go. If you're an ROTC person, they that that's a good place to go. But find your community. They'll help you stay grounded. And it'll be for the and it'll be for the better. Okay. Um, well, thanks for the tips. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to cover? Anything else that people again don't know about you, or uh, would explain how you tick, how you, why you do the things that you do? I don't know. Uh, honestly, I mean. I never really cared about that kind of thing, like what people knew about me, what people didn't. I'm just me. I'm, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be the best I can be, and uh, I'm going to do what I love. That's basically it. I think something that a lot of people are wondering is, do you, do you drink coffee? I mean, where does the energy come from? You know, Because you always seem to bring all of your energy in with everything you do. Protein, lots of it. <laughs> it's, it's all protein then. Well, not all of it, and but I don't drink caffeine. Specifically, uh, the chocolate protein. But yes, I am. A, I ha I do have a bit of an unhealthy addiction for hot chocolate, or at least I might have a bit of an unhealthy addiction to hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Oh yeah, hot chocolate. That's the good stuff, man. So why hot chocolate as opposed to cold cold chocolate? <laughs> I don't know. It's just a thing for me. It's like, the, if it's hot, it's good. Like whenever I, when my parent, like we want to go out to dinner, like I always tell my parents, like as long as it's hot and it's like good, that's all I care about. That's hmm. when I'm when I'm really hungry. Which, by the way, I do need to ask you this because I've okay. asked a lot of people at work and they all think I'm crazy because I do this. Do you warm up your cereal before you eat it? No, that's crazy. Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> okay. Like, what am so I eating? I, oatmeal? I well, here's because uh, so we can agree. Can we agree on cereal before milk? Yeah. Okay, but we can't agree on then put the entire bowl in the in the microwave and warm it up. Why do you need it to be warm? Because it's so good. What? Okay, what kind of cereal though? Honey nut Cheerios. Honey nut Cheerios. Now I, I feel like. Even room temperature. What do you feel about room temperature cereal then? Uh, I think it's just like hot milk. Honestly, that's what it is. Well, that's what your microwave cereal is. But still, when you actually like eat it, it's like it's so sweet and it's so good. I love it. It shouldn't be any sweeter, right? I mean, I've never actually tried cold cereal. So if anything, it would know. get more denatured in the microwave. I, I don't know. I've never tried hot cereal or whatever. Neither have like half the people at work that I've asked. Half the people. So the other half have done this. Well, I don't know. Oh, you're just too afraid to ask other people. I mean, at this point, it's just a meme. <laughs> do you do it at work too? Is that? No, I just do this at home. Okay. You don't like bring in a cereal and a box of cereal and milk and just start chomping down and. Nah, that's not lunch. Lunch is. Uh, I don't. Know. Usually, like a sandwich or uh, whatever is like good that I can cook at home. It's usually. I don't know if you uh, eat breakfast at work. Right. You know? Nah. Are you going to work? Are you I back at? Are oh, you back yeah, in person? yeah, I'm back in the office. We're back in the office. Okay. And honestly, I think it's for the better. I love being in the office. Not only do I actually, like, have an incentive to wake up early so I can go in and meet people and see people, and, like, also not only are the people that are actually in the office, like, really cool people to hang out with, but our gym is open. Mm. And I got a lot, like... Don't get me wrong, the apartment gym is good, but like there's a lot more at the office gym. Like there's a lot more variety of things I can do. They even have a Smith machine, which means I can do squats and bench pressing. And you do it at the off you do it during work hours on, on no, your company. I do it after work. Okay. No, I do it after work. I work, then I change clothes and go to the gym, then I come home. Hmm. So that's the other incentive for actually waking up early so I can go into the office, get done at a reasonable time, and then go to the gym. Uh, okay. Yeah, I get So when did you go back? You just got a curiosity. Ah, uh, so I was in Georgia for a spell um, from May to June. And then sometime in June, I flew back. And then that week I came back, I, I started going into the office again. I think it was actually three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, yeah. So I was in town for Memorial Day. Uh, I flew back on June 6th. I got back here on June 7th, and then I went into the office. Uh, okay. So and, uh, now that I got a, now basically I got a thing now. I'll go in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But Fridays I'll stay home because either I'm teleworking or I have that Friday off because of our work schedules. Yeah, I feel like with your job, you could have people just work from home permanently or do, like you kind of said, like a hybrid kind of a thing. Yeah, you could. Uh, For me, it's just personal preference to be in, be in the office. That way I can actually like talk to people because like, especially if you have like technical problems, you can actually just like go into the lab, find a friend and be like, hey, can you work through this with me? a lot more efficient than uh although if you do call the person then it works but on the whole i'd rather because at least for with that kind of collaboration it's better for me it's it's really personal preference some people can do do their work more produ uh, more productive if not as productive from home and yeah i think like being in the office i think you're going to see a lot of people staying at home 
Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Just... The, the only reason they probably go to the office if they're working on something that they need the lab services, like they need the lab resource, or it's something, uh, well, that they shouldn't be talking about at home. Mm. Because, well, they shouldn't be talking about it at all. Well, now you have to say what it is. I mean, basically, you're you, you're going to the office. You need the lab, or you're working on like super sensitive work. Oh, okay, that's what you're saying. <laughs> I was like, what are they? Yeah, because you have government secrets. I forgot. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we work for the government. Government secrets. Well, you're a contractor for the government, right? Isn't that so? The model. We're not a real. We're kind of a contractor, but we're not a real contractor. We're what we call a fully funded research and development center. Now, the thing you have to understand about federally funded research and development centers is you can't really say that our products are products so much as you can say that our product is knowledge. Oh, this and sounds like a fake scenes. company. This, this already sounds fake. Are you kidding me? This already sounds like some scheme. No, it's not. <laughs> this, is, this is actually like a business model. Like Congress literally budgets money for these research and development centers so that they can produce what's called staff hours of technical expertise, which is basically like they're, they're given money to look into problems and provide solutions and advice to customers, whether that's military or whether that's civilian. It depends. Our focus just happens to be space. Okay. Yeah. Hence why we're called the Aerospace Corporation. Mm -hmm. All right. So your product's knowledge. How, how is your product knowledge? Like I said, we provide solutions and we provide advice. The idea is we provide, if, uh, if someone needs us to look into a problem, then that's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to have, re we're going to do the research. We're going to have experts look into it. And then we're going to basically, we come up with a, with a plan of action. It may, it may involve creating like a, an actual product. It may involve creating a prototype just as a proof of concept, but that's some, some of the things we'll do. It's like working in so, a lab. So almost like a consulting company. Yeah. It's like, we're, it's a combination of like a consulting company and a lab. And like R and D, like an R and D consulting. Yeah. Company. We also, we also do some support for like launches and stuff too. Like, we'll actually, like, have, I think we actually have had people on premise for launches. Uh, is there anything else you want to cover? I mean, we can start wrapping up soon about your life, about uh, anything else, any other interests that you didn't mention already. I think you covered pretty much all of them. Yeah, pretty much. So, so let's, let's go into your future life. Where do you see yourself in, I mean, not to make this sound like a job interview, but, you know. What, 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 you're, and you already kind of talked about it a little, but what about 10, 10 years, 15 years? Is there, is there a family in the future? Yes. Is there a house? I, wanna, I do want to have a family, and I do want to be permanently settled down. Like right now, I'm quasi-permanently settled down, but I wouldn't say I'm permanently settled down, or at least I'm not permanently settled down until I bought a house and had a family. Any romantic yes, interests? Permanently. Not yet. Not yet. Any prospects? Well, for one, I hate dating apps. Well, hate dating thing. apps. Yeah, I hate dating what's, apps. That's what's the problem thing. with dating apps? I don't know. It's just hard to kind of be able to capture who you are. At least that's what I. I, mean, I think you're you're very much an in person kind of kind of person. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I I don't think I I can't imagine. And I've known you for several years now. I can't imagine like trying to understand who you are through. A picture and some tech, you know, yeah. two hundred like, characters or whatever. Like you, you wouldn't like, understand. All yeah, right, so like, but I'd rather but, like go out and meet people instead of like use a dating app. Have you have you met anyone recently? You know, no, I mean, no, call it romantic interest, unfortunately. Oh, so nothing romantic yet. All in good time, my friend. All in good time. You, you're not hopping around the D.C. area, hitting up the bars. Uh, That's not my crowd. <laughs> Oh, I'm at the, uh, I don't know, computer bar site, but whatever. 
whatever that would be. All in good time. Okay. Uh, any, any big purchases lately? Just out of curiosity. Define a big purchase. Uh, something you would want to tell me about. <laughs> I mean, other than, uh, other than my, other than, uh, coming back to tech from a grad degree, not really. Uh, did you get a stimulus? Did you get stimulus checks or whatever? Uh, I didn't get the first two, but I did get the, I did get the most recent one. Or are you just making way too much money at, at your top secret job? I actually got the most recent one. Okay. Didn't get the first two. Is that an accident? You may need to follow up with. No, Joey because B. I was. Uh, it was because I. Uh, that tax year, I was a dependent. Oh yeah. yeah. Which makes you. Which makes. Uh, which makes uh, you automatically ineligible. Yeah, your parents could have been eligible, depending on their. Yeah. I think they were. I'm not sure though. That depends on their situation. Yeah. Else, but, um, okay. But yes, theoretically they could have been. Uh, so could have my. I think my sister could have been as well, and I think she was. She probably yeah. I mean whatever. Uh, okay. Um, well, is there anything else? But you yeah, add? I got the I got the one this year because um, I was no longer dependent, and somehow I was eligible. I guess. Is there anything else you want to mention? Before we head out. Uh, no, not really. Okay, well, you got to give me something to end on here. You can't just say, no, I'm good. <laughs> well, go Jackets. <laughs> All right.